So now we're going to see a sum accumulator using float. Same concept. Uh, I'm still going to name this sum. And I'm going to be explicit about this float right here. Uh, you don't have to be. You could set this to zero. Um, but I think when you're coding, it's, it's nice to, um, it, it kind of gives the reader of your code knowledge that you're intending on this being a float, uh, even though later operations are going to make it a float anyway. So let's talk about, let's, let's just structure this. Um, I'm going to do the same thing as before as the last video where, you know, Let's do something like this. So we've got some floats in here, and I'm going to say for num in nums, and we're just going to take the sum, and we're going to add every num to that, and we're just going to get the sum of these floats. And we're, go we're going to see that it's um, it's going to have a float result, right? This is exactly the same thing as we did with the int, uh, pretty much, right? Uh, but, but let's think about this maybe a little bit differently. Let's do, I'm going to name sum, I'm just going to rename, the, I'm going to rename this to result. And, uh, you know, this is one of the thing, this is one of those names um, that you see pretty often. Uh, people want to give something a name, but it's, I, I don't know how to say this. Uh, you know, there's there's going to be some name that it's hard to be creative around names, to be honest. It, you know, you, you just sort of run out of names. And there are times where, you know, you just need this generic name like result or output, right? You see this in functions all the time where, you know, you, somebody names their accumulator list output. And that's what, that's what, that's what you get. You get output. Cool. Okay. Um, all right, so in this case, we can, uh, why don't we do, why don't we consider that we have a starting point of uh, 15, and we're going to exponentiate every time by some value. So this uh, this is meant to so sort of lead you in a direction. Um, you know, this isn't an interest calculation, but you might want to think about how would you do something like this in, uh, in a problem geared toward calculating interest, especially variable interest, right? Um, you can see how uh, that might work in this case. Oop. Oh, result too large. Um, that makes sense. Let's see if I can get this within our bounds. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> huge number, huge number. Um, yeah, uh, the reason why we had that problem, um, you know, we're exponentiating, you know, exponentiating 15 to the 7.7 .7 Oh, I'm sorry, that's not even exponentiating 15. That's exponentiating the 1.2, uh, 15 to the 1.2, the result of that to the 4.3, the result of that uh, to the 6.7. Yeah, there's no way. That would be a huge number. Um, yeah. I mean, even, even in this case, five exponentiated over and over in this way. So, yeah, so think about how many types of problems you can solve with uh, just a, an integer or a float accumulator, right? Uh, pretty, pretty significant. I mean, that's, that's like a massive, massive number of problems. And, you know, I said this at some other time, accumulators aren't always the solution. And if you can find a more, a non-iterative solution, then don't use an accumulator. However, your first try on almost any problem um, is probably going to use an accumulator pattern. In this case, we are using a float accumulator. I could have done this explicitly, right? Uh, you know, so that we know that this is a float. Um, yeah, but the result that we get is, 
is of a float type.